On today's show, we keep getting you ready for that Week 18 championship matchup. Some news breaks on the show. We have buy or sell. And then for those not in the championship week, we've got some dynasty talk. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave us a comment, engage with us, and enjoy the show. Foot Clan, if you won your championship or you're about to, you need to go to fantasychamps.com and get yourself a trophy what or a this, ring. What is this voice? I don't know, man. But listen, <laughs> I've I've got trophies on the way in the mail from yes. Fantasy Champs. If you add a trophy or a championship belt to your cart, add one of them sixty dollar championship rings and use the code free ring at checkout and you get it for free. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, I'm your host, Mike the Fantasy Him and Wright, joined by my best friend, Jason Moore. Well, and you know we're we're nasty if it's week eighteen. We're still doing oh the just, fantasy football, just the nastiest. Oh, come down in the dumpster with me. <laughs> Do you like garbage? <laughs> then you'll love week eighteen for fantasy football. Welcome in, welcome in. I'm, we're just having a good joke. You know we're bringing the information. We're bringing that fire. Yeah, I mean I think that. Our percentage of listeners that win in week 18 should be even higher than those that win in week that 17. That is an excellent point. Because you're probably playing in leagues that started a long time ago and right. have not updated their rule sets and maybe the guys are still using magazines and uh, outdated uh, information. So if you're listening and you're playing week 18... Hearing uh, great gonna, things about J.K. Dobbins. <laughs> I'm going to put it at an 85% win rate this week. Congratulations. Yes, we will get you to that championship. Please follow us on social media on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman. And Andy is at Andy Holloway. Do not forget, it is Wednesday. The party room continues. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. A dad's away. Spotify today. Green Room. It's a live. If, you, if you're not familiar, you've never joined, it is a live audio program. On the Spotify Green Room app, you just download it, follow Fantasy Footballers, you'll get a notification. We will be live today, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It's a great time. We take questions from y'all. We bring you up stage. You get to actually yeah. talk. Yeah, it's like uh, you come on stage with us virtually and sure. get to ask us your questions. It's really fun. And we just have a good time. We talk fantasy football and life. A lot of other stuff as well. The quick question of the day comes in from Nathan Brown off of YouTube. Seems that Nathan Brown is a little interested in dynasty. So mm. the quick question is, could you sum up in layman's terms how a dynasty league works? Sure. A dynasty league is not a keeper league. A keeper league is where at the end of the year you're going to take one, two, three players from your roster and retain them for the following season with different rule sets. A dynasty league is really, really fun and interesting it tries to emulate being in the NFL where you own a roster. You manage a franchise. A franchise, and it's way bigger. You've got like 30 players uh, on your roster, and you have that roster forever. Forever. If a player is going to leave your team, it is not because the season is over. It is because you cut them or traded them if a player is going to be added to your team. So every transaction you make, you're thinking about long-term ramifications, age, contract situations, um, or you should be thinking about those things. But sure. in general, it's just a really fun way to have, you know, you, when, the longer one of those leagues goes on, the, and the more history and, uh, you know, everything that you do, what if your team isn't championship worthy? What, how do you deal with it? Do you try to draft better? Do you try to tear it down to the nubs, trade for draft picks? There's a really fun um, kind of experience of a long-term view of franchise construction. Yeah, I totally agree. It was the, the first year. There's definitely a learning curve to it. But as that snowball starts going down the hill, it's extremely fun. Uh, and it's a just a different 
level of uh, of paying attention to the NFL that these are your guys, and you you grow more attached to players. Certainly, emotionally invested in those players, and it's also really fun to pair with keeper or yeah. redraft leagues because. You do a lot more in a dynasty in the off season. You care so much more about rookies. You have a rookie draft. You you have trading and picks and all those things in the off season. In season, you have actually less work to do. So you you don't usually have you know waiver day in a normal redraft league. That's sometimes that's a chore. You're like, oh man, I'm gonna have to <laughs> spend an hour or two on these waivers. In a dynasty league, there might be a guy or two that you maybe put a claim in, but right. there are many weeks where I, I don't touch the waivers because you're 30 people deep on 12 you know different teams, so most of the players are on rosters. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Buy or Sell, week 18. Last week, Jason and I both went two out of three. Not too bad. Not too shabby. This week, buy or sell, Nick Chubb, Nicholas, versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Will he be a top 10 running back again? Last week, devastation, mm. running back 38 against the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is a matchup that should have seen more points for Nick Chubb, but they went very pass heavy. He was the running back three at Cincinnati in week nine. Top 10, Jerry, buy or sell. Yeah, I mean, the, there's there's kind of two different narratives here. One narrative is they are going to shelve Baker and get back to the running game, which they completely abandoned last week. And to Baker, see. Baker is out, if you've not heard yes. that. That was an official, he will not be playing the final week. So now they're going to rely on the run and get Chubb involved and, and uh, you know, establish it. Um, that's their best chance to win, for sure, is to get Nick Chubb going. Um, the other narrative, which I uh, sub, uh, you know subscribe to a little bit, um, I, I think it's the reality is they talked about his ribs being a problem last week, Nick Chubb, and so the lack of usage was in part because of that. This team is not playing for anything, and if you've got a player who is a little bit banged up, I don't think you're going to go out there and run him into the ground. This is a major part of your franchise. You are in your eyes, a playoff, even Super Bowl contending franchise next year. So I'm going to sell this. I don't think he gets the volume uh, to really excel in Week 18. What if I told you that running back Dearness Johnson was placed on the COVID list yesterday, putting his weekend in jeopardy? I would tell you that Dearness Johnson will be activated before Sunday from the COVID <laughs> list because the NFL no longer cares about that. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to... I'm concerned as well, mostly because of the injury that they might rest him. He's a very expensive part of their franchise, so I will, I will reluctantly sell the top ten finish for Nick Chubb. Jalen Waddle versus New England, top eighteen wide receiver. It's very what specific. What a specific line! What are we why, doing here? Why Brooks? did we set it at wide receiver eighteen? I'm just curious. Because before last week, he was a top 18 wide receiver in four of his five games played. Oh, okay. Uh, so he must have hit. Yeah, I see it. He hit wide receiver 18 in week 13. So the stat sticks. Okay, but last week was a bit of a disaster, really for the entire Miami Dolphins organization, who have been eliminated from playoff contention. Do they come out? Do they want to beat the New England Patriots? Oh, for sure. They well, I, know, I know that they want to, but I'm saying, will they... Well, they put maximum effort into beating the Patriots. I think because it's the Patriots, it's the division rival, the, they can play spoiler. I think they will have complete maximum effort. Unfortunately, I think that the New England Patriots will also have complete maximum effort. I think they're better. They look to take away your number one option. And I think it's become clear as the season has gone along that their number one option is Jalen Waddle. Um, Jalen Waddle has been a revelation. He has been an awesome rookie. He could absolutely have a great game here, especially if you're in full PPR because he's just been, you know, before this last game, 10 receptions, 9 receptions, 9 receptions, 8 receptions, not targets, but right. I mean, it's hard to not finish in the top 18 if you're getting that kind of volume. Um, but those matchups 
were, you know, the New York Giants, the, uh, you know, uh, the New Orleans Saints, the Jets. Uh, it wasn't a murderer's row. I'm going to stay pessimistic here, and I'm going to sell the top 18 line against New England because I think they're going to target shutting down Waddle. Waddle in week one, so his first game as a an NFL professional, it was on the road against New England. He turned six targets into four receptions, 61 yards, and a touchdown. Four for 61 and a touchdown was only good enough for wide receiver 27. So good what game. a week. Yeah, but good games were had by all. I'm going to... I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy that the volume will be there for Waddle once again. The team will try and dust themselves off after last week's disaster. All right, Terry McLaurin against the New York Giants. The line is double-digit fantasy points, which he has only done four times this year. A devastating season here for Terry McLaurin, who is great. I will not relent on this point. Terry McLaurin is very good. When he goes off, he goes off. He you you don't put up four games of a hundred plus yards and a touchdown four times throughout the the year if you're a lucky receiver. You do that because you're good and you're overcoming your circumstances. And historically, he has destroyed the New York Giants in four career games. He averages 8 for 96. Double-digit fantasy points, Jay. Terry McLaurin, buy or sell? Oh, man. How <laughs> pessimistic do I stay? <laughs> what, are you, what is happening? Uh, we you get got the grump of dumps well, over here. Here's the reality. His last six games, he has averaged 5.3 fantasy points and half PPR. He has not been good. Well, there's, and, are you letting a zero average in, in there? Yeah. Yeah. You want to know I'm why? Just, because he, he scored zero points that week. I understand that, but he only played 49% of the snaps. 49% of the snaps should equal more than zero receptions. But um, last week, eight targets, seven receptions, 61 yards uh, against a more difficult Philadelphia Eagles. He always has great games against the Giants. This is one where it's like, how does he not get 10 points? How? But I feel like something is just wrong. I mean, you look at Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke, uh, you know, some of these games has been not like, oh, he's he's not been great. We're talking two games ago, 32% completion percentage. 30, 44% the game before that. It's, That's very bad. Yeah. So I, I think I'm going to complete the trifecta here. I'm going to sell. I'm just, I'm a negative Nancy over what are you, here. There's a real Scrooge situation well, going on. Real Scrooge over here. Uh, I will, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy that average of sometimes a player just can destroy a team, uh, i.e. T.Y. Houston, Terry McLaurin, that average of 8 for 96. And the Giants, they are beatable. They are, they are imploding. Joe Judge is saying some very, Weird, uh, weird things out there in the media, also known as lies. <laughs> like you know, some people call them weird statements. Other people say just lies. I'm not saying he's lying. I'm just saying he's not telling the truth. <laughs> Thank you. That's a much kinder way to say it. Um, which, which is in fact saying he's a liar. Uh, but yeah, the, the Giants are. It's it's an implosion. What's going on over there? How so, are they supposed to keep him? I don't, Judge. I don't understand how you keep Joe Judge when it's been this bad. It's not like they've been average. They haven't shown progression. Like if you were showing me like they're getting better. They're right. moving in the right direction, but it's not it's not really there yet. They're still bad but moving in the right direction, but it's not. It's like there's no glimmer of hope. There's no silver lining. The best thing you can say is, well, they've dealt with a ton of injuries. Well, you want to know why they might have dealt with a ton of injuries? Because he works these guys to the freaking grindstone all season, all off season. So, I don't know, man. I, I if I cannot fathom having a New York franchise and sticking with Joe Judge. So I've been two years for him. He did win six games as a rookie head coach. That is uh, dropped to four so far. So it could be a four and thirteen. It could be five. Could be could be five and twelve. 
Yeah, they could have lost one more game with one more extra try this year. <laughs> that was buy or sell from pristineauction.com. Pristineauction.com, use our registration code BALLERS, and you will get a $10 credit for your first auction victory. News and notes from around the league. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, this one deserves the button. Yeah, I, 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 I know we just got in, but we still got to break it. Breaking news. Go ahead, Jay. Well, this just happened as we started recording, but the Bengals Pro Bowl running back Joe Mixon tested positive today for COVID-19, and he will be out Sunday versus the Browns per league sources. So, Samaj P. Ryan, last year, he was a league winner as the running back three in week 16 against the Texans. Are you, I mean... It, ju it just continues, Jay. The, the running back redemption tour continues. Yeah. Rashad Penny, Sony Michelle, and now my dude, Samaj P. Ryan, can he win people some championships? I think that you should be picking him up immediately. Just in case, uh, we got to see how this shakes out. I'm a little. Are you surprised that they've ruled him out already? Is like, I thought with the new protocol he could technically make a it little, back. It's Wednesday. Yeah, I mean a, a, a positive case. I'm not. I don't remember the. I read all of the details painstakingly and and boringly. I don't remember if you're positive and unvaxed. Maybe you need that five day window. All right, well, let's see if this factors into it because head coach Zach Taylor has said he has not decided if Joe Burrow or other key starters will play or will rest against the Browns. The Bengals have secured their playoff spot. They're the number three seed right now. They do technically have a small chance at the number one seed if they win and then some other teams lose. Is that enough for Zach Taylor to try and go for it or do you play your starters? And that's now up in the air. That's very iffy. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would hope that we know, you know, prior to Sunday morning whether or not they're going to start. I was really surprised when I saw that because, like you said, they they still have a legitimate shot at getting the number one seed. I realize some of that is out of their control, but if you have the chance to secure the bye week and home throughout the playoffs, like I can't imagine not taking that. That being said, um, if Joe Burrow is actively hurt and you don't have Joe Mixon, then yeah, I mean, I, I might shut it down. So you just got to pay attention. Um, if they do shut it down, I still think Samaj P. Ryan could volume his way to I agree. A, a lot of relevance. And he, they're using him as a pass catcher as well, so he'll probably see three down work. It just to follow up, this is what the Bengals would need. They would need to win and have a loss by the Titans, the Chiefs, and the Patriots, or a win plus the Bills win and the Titans and Chiefs lose. Yeah, okay, shut them down. <laughs> okay, shut them down. That's uh, that's probably low enough odds where health is more important. You're probably playing next week, and so I'd rather heal up this week. So, yeah, I mean, that that's a little scary for a lot of players. I mean, if they shut down Joe Burrow, right? what, what are you going to get from? And, like, you know, you've got Jamar Chase. The 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 greatest revelation <sighs> the NFL has ever seen. If he plays a quarter and stops or doesn't play because week 18, oh, man. Yeah, it's tough. In Browns news, we uh, Baker Mayfield will have the offseason surgery. He is not going to play week 18. Case Keenum will play. And, again, the, the Browns have – Place Dearness Johnson on the COVID list. We'll see if he makes it back. I guess. I guess if this is already Wednesday, maybe I'm wrong on my timeline for the the COVID protocols. And well, he, Johnson was yesterday. Okay, and I think was was Wentz a Tuesday or was he Monday? Um, I, I don't recall. I don't remember the timeline there. Ravens head coach John Harbaugh has said Lamar Jackson has a chance to play in Week 18. Uh, okay. There is a report that the Titans are expecting Derrick Henry to return to practice Wednesday. Now, the original timeline, the O, the original, o original. Uh, had him as possibly the fastest he could get back was to play in Week 18. Um, I do not think he's going to play this week, but practicing this week is phenomenal for them, and obviously they could 
secure the bye week, which would give him, you know, this week plus next week of rest, and then come back in the playoffs and with Brad, not just resting, but you know, yes, the getting opposite into the game of that, shape. getting back into shape. So we we will see here. Uh, Clyde edwards alaire did not practice for the Kansas City Chiefs. He has a chance to play. His game is on Saturday, so that's something to monitor because if edwards alaire is out, then Daryl Williams is in your lineup. Teddy Bridgewater remains sidelined on Tuesday practice with a concussion. And <laughs> we're putting this – is this for Kyle? Is this blurb specifically for the Borg Hogan? Yeah, well, you have a special one too, Mike. I Well, I was skipping over it because it's not relevant, but I'll get to it. So Terrace Marshall Jr., uh, second-round pick of the Carolina Panthers, was placed on IR. He could be great. Yeah, this is Kyle. <laughs> Kyle loves – Terrace Marshall Jr. Uh, look, I loved the tape as well, but you, you learn you learn to cut your losses early, um, and that's what I have done. Speaking of cutting your losses, the Cowboys have designated tight end Blake Jarwin to return from the IR, so that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> if Jarwin I, is, I, I went on a rant in the office yesterday, so I'll just share it. My process was sound. Oh. My process of the Cowboys tight end was very sound. Look at Dr. Schultz getting it done. A a firmly entrenched tight end one for the entire season. I I will say that maybe Schultz is better than Jarwin. I don't right. know. Right. I mean, don't look at that. Just look at the process. Um now if Jarwin is activated for the game and plays in the game, does that No. That doesn't hinder you from starting the doctor? It does not. It, uh, Dr. Schultz is their man this year. He is a free agent. Maybe he goes and gets a big bag of money, and then we're back. Oh, then, no, then he- <laughs> no, I won't. I won't let you do that to yourself, Mike. I won't let you go back on Blake Jarwin. But I will. Yeah, you I can't know. stop me, I no know. matter who you are. Uh, before we get into the mailbag, I want to thank today's sponsor, Paint Your Life, making memories. We're in a new world here, and PaintYourLife.com. They are helping you to cherish and celebrate those moments because they take a photograph you give them and then they have one of their incredible artists create this out of the medium of your choice. It's a great gift idea for birthdays, anniversaries, weddings. I have a few things from Paint Your Life. I have a spectacular oil painting of my precious Bernadoodle, Daisy. Nice. Daisy we, the Doodle. We got like a charcoal drawing we do. of we, the three of us. And we've got that proudly displayed in uh, in our office up here, and it's spectacular work because you get to choose from a team of world class artists, and they w- you work with them until every detail is perfect. User friendly platform, it makes it easy to to custom order the hand painted portrait in less than five minutes, and it's fast. You can receive this portrait in as little as two weeks. You just send them the picture, and then they take care of it. Like I said, perfect gifts here for birthday anniversary. I know. Uh, Andy got his parents. Uh, he did one of the family pictures, mm-hmm. had it painted up, got it to gave it to the parents. Very well received, I hear. Very well received. If you want in on this, at PaintYourLife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now, as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off plus free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word FOOTBALL to 64000. That's FOOTBALL. To 64,000. Text football to 64,000. Uh, Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter the most. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, text football to 64,000. And again, if you are going to win your fantasy championship, which you are, and you're going to be a fantasy champ, there's only one place to go. It's fantasychamps.com. <laughs> FantasyChamps.com has all the trophies you need. What, what, what was the hitch in the giddy up Well, the there? hitch in the giddy up was just to keep it Fantasy Champ. You're going to be a uh, Fantasy Champ, so okay. go to FantasyChamps.com. Well, I don't want people going to Fantasy, fantasy Champs with like multiple S's. It's that, fantasy Champs. Okay. But you, but do you see the reason for the pause? That's how a snake They're says fantasy it. Champ. Okay. Dot com. Anyway, this is some of your finest work. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, Fantasy champs—they've got awesome trophies. We just bought a trophy for ourselves. They also have, and I don't think we've ever highlighted this before. They have like the fifty-six-inch trophies. You want to really show up with like a life-size, man-size trophy? You can get that sucker, and you carry just, that in. You—you you don't carry 
a trophy of that size. You ride it. That's in. right. You ride it in. <laughs> you put that trophy between your legs and you walk into your draft party as the most obnoxious person ever. And whenever you get a trophy or a belt and they have the customizable belts, add the championship rings to the cart. It's a $59 value. My favorite, the FFL Stunner ring or the Bling ring. Right, right, right. And uh, use the code free ring in your checkout process. And if you've got a trophy or a belt, you will get that ring for free at fantasychamps.com. <laughs> Kyle, have you recovered from your devastating championship loss yet? I feel much better. That's fantastic uh, because you're doing the mailbag drop. Oh! Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> Yes, 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 little, yes. Little early. Little oh. early. Yes. Well, I mean, you just got to Arizona. But welcome to the party. And we show no mercy. No, I, I, that was a full diehard. I dropped the body onto the cop car. Yeah. Welcome to the party, pal. Oh, man. Thank you, Kyle. That was sensational. The mailbag, uh, if you want to get in for our next mailbag, you can visit the site, click submit a question, or... You can call us at 302-464-TFFB. Leave, leave us a voicemail. Make it clear, concise. Don't mess up because Brooks might put you on blast. Oh, that was so great. It's very possible that he might do that. But speaking of voicemails. Hey, Brawlers. This is Laura. So I had five teams eliminated during the horrendous week 15. And to be honest, I'm still not over it. So my question is, what is your best advice for dealing with fantasy football heartbreak? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Oh, man. Week 15, the upside Whoa. down. I, I know yeah. so many people who they had a monster team. They get in the playoffs, and that week 15 massacre of fantasy yeah. football uh, destroyed them. To lose all five of your – to be in five playoffs and then be like out of all of them, that is brutal. And I – I'm going to be honest. I don't have good advice. I only have bad advice here. Oh, so hopefully no. you have good advice. I do. I, I find that how I cope is eating. So, I mean, <laughs> this is very helpful. You just eat. What's the, what's the go-to? The go-to is if I'm really, really upset. It, uh -huh. My go-to is just it's got a drive through That's it. It okay. doesn't like there's not one. There's not one place like I gotta go to, but it's if it doesn't have a drive-through, it is way too healthy for my feelings. Okay, that's where I live in defeat. And we're talking a drive-through order ten ten plus dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what what do we go to? Oh my! What does it hit? What is that? But what is the tilt budget for the fantasy football? Eat your feelings. Oh man. I don't want to admit this. Well, is, no, if it's just no. myself, it's it's I'm I'm probably going north of twenty. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, Jason. Tilt hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, number one, I would say it. Uh, I I get it. That feels real bad, but remind yourself that that week fifteen. In all of my years of playing fantasy football, I've never seen anything like that. That was. Just absurdity at the highest level of great players all over the place just dropping a deuce in their pants for fantasy football purposes. COVID heartbreaks. Like, there was nothing normal about that situation. Even when the variance goes wrong, I've never seen anything like that. But number two, I'm usually. Sometimes I'll go to the, the, the drive through but I'm usually a clean the house, jump on the, the stationary bike. Yeah, there's so much I I, so I much usually better. work it out. I oh. get the endorphins going, and then you, you might you – know, this is against our interests because we're a year-round fantasy football show, but you might need to remove yourself from fantasy football for a week or two. Yeah, take a break, turn around, then come back fresh. Yeah. And also yeah. know this. Everybody know this. You're going to lose more than you win. It's just a fact. Yes. There's, yes. there's 12 people will. in the league. They're all trying to win. I know about that this year. 11 twelfths will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 11 twelfths of your league will end up losing. And I know so many people that it, it took six, seven, eight, nine years before they ever won a championship. Maybe they got there a couple times that they lost. But it will come. You just you just stick with it. And then usually, and I don't know how this always happens, but once you break the ice and you get that championship, it's like 
I can do it now. And you're just, you, you, I don't know how it makes you better, but if, I feel like once you get that first one, you're back in it more often than not. Next question here. We got one off of Instagram. Will Joe Burrow be a top five quarterback selection next season? Where does the pendulum swing after a mostly disappointing year from Joe Burrow, but then two weak winning? I mean, Joe Burrow was a championship winning quarterback. If you got into the playoffs and you played him in the semis and championship round, you probably won. So is, where will the draft pick swing? Well, let's, uh, let's look at that, right? So Mahomes will be ahead of him. We know that. Um, I think... Will will Lamar Jackson be ahead of him? He is very difficult because so uh, so Mahomes, Josh Allen. Yes, those two are done deals. Pro, I think Kyler probably still will be. Yeah, because he runs of his, because of his upside, and and Hopkins will be back. Yeah. What well, I don't know how to gauge how people will feel about Lamar Jackson. I, 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 I think, think I think he's going to drop a little bit. I think Lamar Jackson will still be there. Because when you run as much as those guys do, there's there's just an advantage, and, and you can combine that and ha have higher ceilings. So I'm going to put those four ahead. But then at the fifth spot, whether you want to go Herbert or whether you want to go Burrow or whether you want to go – Rodgers is still – Oh, Aaron Rodgers. Probably. He's probably still playing. I Ru mean, I, he could retire as he is – this guy's out of control. Or Russ or some of these guys, but he's, right. he's in that oh, conversation. Stop that. Deck for the fifth pick. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I said those names out loud, when I'm taking the shot, I would take the shot on Burrow. Like I would – I think Burrow's ceiling – when he hits his full potential, which he'll do, is going to be greatness, true fantasy um, glory. The problem is if draft season says that he is that high, then I probably won't draft him. Because if he's sneaking up in the fifth round, I'm not going to get him there. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna grab you know Brady in the twelfth again and just keep <laughs> keep doing yeah, it. Yeah, that probably will happen. All right, let's go back to the voicemail. Hey, Ballers, this is Trace from Big Montana. Uh, just a question for Mike. Mike, do you have any fantasy football tattoos? Thanks. Love the show, guys. I do not. Really? That was, that was an easy question. That is a very answer. – so you don't – why don't you have our logo? The, the the thing about the logo is, I mean, you got to earn a place on the body, first off. Like okay. my uh, – I feel like this show has earned that. <laughs> well, well, you. I'll give you the example. Okay. I did. I now have a uh, like a representation for my wife tattooed on my arm, but we were married for over ten years before that thing went on my body. Yeah, but this show is so much better than your marriage. <laughs> I mean, you just proved my point. So let's get that. We're talking a big back tattoo, just huge with wings coming out of the logo. I've just designed it for. I you. I have seen an artist who they. Uh, there's two of them that I'm interested in. One of the, an artist where they make it look like a patch, and oh, I'm talking like it looks like like a patch. You, they the videos you they always pinch it to prove to you that it is not a patch because it, it is absurd how much it looks like that. And then some people do like a, it looks like an actual sticker with the shading, and those look very cool. So if if I found the right artist who could do that quality of making it unique, like stitched on or a sticker, I would get it done. Neat. But I got to find that person. Uh, let's go. Next question here is from Instagram. Do you guys think that D Hop is going to hop back next year? It, where Where does DeAndre Hopkins belong in terms of not elite wide receivers? Because that's I don't think it's debatable that he still is an elite wide receiver. But you can debate how elite is he for fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what he was on target for through the first eight games where he was healthy, um, and, and really you got to go the first seven games because he didn't really play much in week eight. So you saw enough of a season to see what he is in this offense at you know at least his current age. And what you had was a guy who was more inconsistent because he was more touchdown dependent. However, 
a crux of the offense for he was the scoring Red a lot of touchdowns. Oh, he was on pace. He was on pace for seventeen touchdowns through those first seven weeks, but he was only on pace for a, a thousand twenty yards, which is still good. A thousand and seventeen is an elite guy, um, but it's not the you know when. I would always prefer for my top end wide receivers if I'm drafting one of the studs at the top. Jamar I, Chase or DeAndre Hopkins? Jamar Chase. Okay. Um, I think I think when it comes down to the elite of the elite, uh, the elite of the elite, Hopkins will be at the very end of that list, but he will still be um, probably a, about wide receiver ten. I'm guessing. Looking back and remembering, because. DeAndre Hopkins, I don't think you can lock him in as a top five guy, but still a very, very solid uh, contributor to your team. Like Looking at what he did over the first seven games because he got hurt in week eight, and then going and looking at the correlation of Kyler Murray, mm -hmm. where Kyler was, was lighting the world on fire for fantasy football over that stretch of time. I mean, I think that he was, like, the number one guy. Now, Kyler also got his own injury, but now here with the absence of DeAndre Hopkins, it has not been great for for Kyler Murray. So that'll be something to pay attention to for the Cardinals. To, yeah, to, to highlight, you said he was lighting the world on fire, fire, Kyler was. Yeah. Kyler, through those first seven weeks when he had Hopkins, he was on a full game pace of 4,800 yards and 41 passing touchdowns. That is without any rushing. That is, forget the extra seven rushing touchdown pace and 300 rushing yard pace. If he was just a pocket passer, 4,840 is like your number one quarterback. Kyler was the odds-on favorite for sports books to be the MVP through that portion of the season. It has since tumbled down. All right, we got a Week 18 question here. Tyler off of Twitter, Jason. Do you flex Amon Ross St. Brown? Or Eli Mitchell, the missile. Oh man. Ah, uh, I. <laughs> so he, here's the truth. If I if I had these guys, I would put in uh, Elijah. So Amon Ra is playing against the Green Bay Packers, who may or may not be playing starters. Mm -hmm. They say that they're taking it like any other game as of now. So assume that they are playing their starters. And Eli Mitchell is playing against the Rams. Yeah, I mean I. I'm going to go Elijah Mitchell. What we have seen the 49ers do against the Rams, five wins in a row against them, and you know the other game this year, they just ran the ball nonstop. Uh, 27 carries for Elijah Mitchell against the Rams early in the season. It didn't result in the fantasy game he wanted because he didn't get a touchdown. But I, you know, it's it's funny because I have too often answered away from Amon Ross St. Brown over the last month and regretted it every single time sure and so don't hear what I'm not saying this isn't an anti Amon Ross St. Brown he's just been great he should be in but if he's it's always a matter of well what are the other options and I think Elijah Mitchell's a great option this week all right we got one more voicemail here hey ballers appreciate everything that you guys do love the show first year in the keeper league was wondering if you have any pointers or tips just kind of the way to navigate a keeper league and is Michael Carter for an eighth round value a worthy keeper. Thanks guys. So I'll, I'll stay, uh, I'll start it off with don't, and it's in, when you're in a keeper league, cause I, we all do the exact same thing. You're already making the strategy right now and you have plenty of time. We have plenty of off season to look at risers and fallers in, in terms of the value of the, of who should be kept and who should be not. But Michael Carter, at at this point, yes, he, he is absolutely worth uh, an eight round or uh, an eighth round value. Michael Carter, Jay, after what he has shown, you know, kind of building throughout the season, getting the trust, he was he was a fourth round rookie pick. There were whispers from the bushes that he had a much higher grade from teams, but there was a injury concern that let him slip down to the four. Oh, we, we loved Michael Carter in college, for sure. Yeah, oh yeah, he was definitely an interesting prospect. But he's a fourth rounder. Though the hit rate on fourth round rookie running backs is pretty low, but I think you would call this a hit at this point. I would call it a hit for being a fourth rounder. I would not just call it a hit 
universally. And and when you really look really? at Yeah, I mean, you know, his 17 game pace would be 800 yards and five touchdowns and not not bad, but not like, oh my gosh, a league winner. And and a lot of his production came again in those games uh, through the passing work without Zach Wilson. So I don't think it's an automatic that he's worth an eight round an eighth round pick. He will be drafted ahead of the eighth round next year. So yes, in that sense, yes, he's worth an eighth round pick. But you don't get to keep all of your players. And I'm gonna guess that there are more important, more impactful players that you could keep um versus getting the value because I don't look at Michael Carter as a league winner next year. Um, we don't know what they're going to do in the offseason, but if everything rolls the same, I just don't view him as – I would rather keep keep a more important, more impactful player, even if it costs me a higher round to do so than Michael Carter. Okay. And and strategy-wise, his first question about keeper leagues, the one thing I would say, and it kind of goes uh, to the heart of this question, is don't overdo age. Don't, sure. Like in a keeper league, I view keeper leagues when it comes to strategy – a hundred percent as redraft leagues. I don't care yeah, about a guy a being younger than the others. It's just who's playing the best, who's scoring the most points right now. Because you don't keep enough players to possibly have it really, really matter for longevity. So the fact that Michael Carter's a rookie doesn't factor in too much in a keeper. It would in a dynasty. All right, let's let's get to a couple dynasty questions then. And this this to me, it, like this is why a part of why Dynasty is so fun because you actually have to talk about these players. In a Dynasty League, this is from Julian off of Twitter, who would you rather have, Marvin Jones or Kenyon Drake? <laughs> it's always Marvin Jones. Always. Oh, thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, so but to lay it out, Marvin Jones will be turning 32. He still has a year left with Jacksonville. Kenyon Drake is 28. He still has a year left with the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, neither is neither is great. But what was the what was the Drake injury? I can't remember what it, was it. Just a broken leg. Just a moment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Talk through Marvin uh, Jones. We Drake suffered a broken ankle and will okay. re miss the remainder of the 2021 20 So, if, as long as it's a clean break, he should be back. I, no I would, problem. Yeah, I mean, I would take Drake over Marvin really? Jones. I would, and here's why. Uh, they are both at the absolute end of the career. You're not getting something two years from now from either of these. 33-year-old Marvin Jones and 30-year-old Drake is not going to be someone that you can play in this league. So you're just looking at next year. They both are under contract with their current teams right now, and I don't think Marvin Jones can do anything with Trevor Lawrence. And I base that on this year. <sighs> Man. of him not doing anything with Trevor Lawrence. And I would imagine they're going to go out and get another piece for Trevor Lawrence that is more important, usurps Marvin Jones and targets and all of that. Marvin is going to be older. I mean, he's 31.8, so he's almost 32. I, I just don't think you're going to get anything from Marvin the rest of the way, whereas Drake, while he's also on his last leg, which was just broken. Oh, um, I, I, they paid a lot of money. He's got five and a half million at the running back position. So I think he'll have a little bit of use and he'll be a valuable insurance back should Josh Jacobs go down next year. So, I mean, the, you know, you're you're not talking – I'm not banging the drum for either of these guys. I'm not even looking at the drum. I'm away from the drums. I'm playing a trumpet for other players. <laughs> but if I have to pick between these two, I would go Drake. That was quite a journey. Instagram, SG1616, bonjour, Kareem Hunt. What is his dynasty outlook? This is a great question because we have – I've got Kareem – we play in two yes. dynasty leagues. I have Kareem Hunt in both of them. I traded for him midway through the season when he was dominating and then he stopped playing well, football. Yeah, he, he got hurt, but just to reflect uh, real quick on what Kareem Hunt was able to do, throughout the first six games of the season – he was a top 24 running back in five of them. He was a top 15 running back in four of those six. Then he got hurt, uh, maybe came back too quickly. Then he got hurt again. Then he was on the COVID list. So a, a great start, but a real rocky finish for Kareem Hunt. And I think people are going to – you when you have a season like that, you kind of forget – 
how dominant he was for fantasy football. And the uh, to be fair, the question was always, can Kareem Hunt really keep doing this where he's in a backfield behind Nick Chubb who had just gotten his contract extension. Nick Chubb, one of the best pure runners in football. Can Kareem Hunt really still provide fantasy value? And the answer is yes because oh. he is – Kareem Hunt is – Great. You just brought it up. When he was healthy those first six weeks, he was the running back eight in fantasy football. He was a top ten running back until he got injured, and then his season was derailed by injury. The, the Browns' season was derailed by all sorts of sure. injury and COVID problems. And, and uh, you know, the, they were a darling Super Bowl pick, and they're not going to make the playoffs. Everything went wrong after a strong start to the season. Um, and I think a big part of that was losing Kareem Hunt. He was really important um, for this team going forward. He's only 26 years old right now. So he is not, you know, aging out of the position. Um, I think he will be what he was, not a top 10 running back. I wouldn't put him there going into next year, but a valuable every week startable asset in fantasy next year who, you know, if the things go the other direction, could end up getting more value as the season goes along. Question off of Instagram for this week, Jay. Would you risk playing Dalvin Cook this week? Vikings are uh, – they were eliminated, correct? Producers? Yes. Yes, that that's correct. a thumbs up. Yeah, so they are out. They're technically playing for nothing. Uh, I mean, Kirk Cousins should be back off of the COVID list. The te the, the players are not playing for nothing. Uh, you know, Zimmer is probably still trying to retain a job and things like that. But would you be playing Dalvin Cook? Or would you play Devin Singletary? Man, it oh, that's that's a funny Devin question. Devin Singletary has been dominating, and that question especially comes up here. So last four weeks, he's been a, a running back two or better since week 15, running back six, running back 11, running back four. And what's the best possible matchup for a fantasy running back? The Jets are the best. The Detroit Lions are probably the second. Best. The New York Jets are who the Buffalo Bills play. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, it's tough because oh. Dalvin is – Dalvin, I, I know he's he's playing, and, and you know, um, but he's got the shoulder injury. He's playing with the device. The device. Um, if you don't have a chance to make the playoffs, are you really going to risk – Dalvin, you know, are you – I feel like I would, at the most, go 50-50 with Madison. But how do you bench Dalvin Cook? Do you have the stones to do that for oh, – So, man. They, I, just, I, they just played the Bears. It was on the road. It was 31 opportunities for Dalvin Cook, but that, that was 28 carries for 89 yards. He was the running back 21. Yeah, I mean, over the last several weeks, you would have been better to play Singletary. Um, Singletary's been pretty touchdown dependent, and that scares me, but the that is like the specialty of the New York Jets is giving up rushing touchdowns. So I think I would. I think I would. Ha I would personally have the stones to put in Devin Singletary ahead of Dalvin Cook this week. I think I lean that way as well slightly, but of course – Wait for uh, some more news to come out. And speaking of Dynasty, mm. Jason. Dynasty Download. The Dynasty Download video bumper just keeps getting better and better. Oh, I, I forget that we customize it every time. I do too. Until that. Until that very until moment. Until that button is pushed. And the, friend, the best friend friendship has now been memorialized in that bumper youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to check that out if you do make sure you subscribe to the channel all right we want to mention a couple players here that it's early and if you're in a dynasty league people have asked when should trades start up if your championship was on uh this past weekend was finalized on monday that means on tuesday trades should be opened up that's how we look at it that's how we treat our dynasty leagues they do not stop. So it's early on in the off season. In fact, as early as you can possibly get. But who is somebody that you are targeting for a trade in Dino League? Yeah, and a lot of Dynasty Leagues, um, they don't even close trades ever. 
so yeah, some, through the playoffs. Some so, do not. so um, you know, it's, it's a relevant question for probably all dynasty leagues now. A player that I would be targeting, um, because when I look at like I'm gonna go try to acquire a player, I'm usually going to focus on people that I think are undervalued and affordable. Like I would love to go trade for Kyle Pitts. You know what I mean? Sure. Go trade the world for Kyle Pitts. He's going to be great for a long time. But that's not realistic that you're always going to be able to get someone like that. But a player that I think you could acquire in most situations and is undervalued for what he should be valued is Ramondre Stevenson, rookie running back for the New England Patriots. He's been great so far. Um, he is their backup running back behind Damian Harris, so he hasn't had all the opportunity in the world. But when we've seen him, he has been very, very good. We brought he this has. stat up yesterday, but he is one of only five rookies over the last seven years with multiple games of 100-plus rushing yards and two touchdowns. Uh, the others are all superstars. Uh, he's been a top 24 running back five times this year. And remember, the beginning of the season – not only was he, like, not used very much, he wasn't a part of the – he wasn't active. He wasn't, you know, in the games. He was, like, he fumbled his, like, first carry ever and then was shut down right. uh, yes, yes. for a month. But Damian Harris has one year left on his deal. Uh, the Patriots aren't the most loyal um, franchise. They're kind of, like, like, chew them up, spit them out. Keep moving forward. So, uh, not that they wouldn't re-sign Damian Harris, but I don't think that, you know, they're just going to look at what's best for their team. And I think moving forward with Ramondre would be good. He is obviously young as a rookie. So, over the next several years, I think you're going to have a lot of good fantasy value from Ramondre Stevenson. And this is an offense with Mac Jones that projects to just get better and better. He's a rookie right sure. now, and he's he's been great. But we're saying he's been great for a rookie. That's what he's been great as. He hasn't been, you know, he's not on pace for 35 touchdowns and a ton of scoring from this offense. He's just been great for expectation. But what that proves is that he can develop into someone that could throw for 30-plus touchdowns, move the offense. And Ramondre is also a pass-catching guy too. So I I like targeting him um, because he, sh he should be acquirable. And in Dynasty Leagues – it can be difficult sometimes because you want to target talent. Yes, you know, like we talk about situation and opportunities and those things, those drive fantasy football and those matter so, so much in a redraft and a keeper league. But in a dynasty league, when it's long term, sometimes you have to bet on the talent and bet that the solution around them is going to improve. Uh, you know, just a, the memory that comes to mind immediately here is A.J. Brown was uh, I think he was drafted in the second round of the NFL draft if I remember right and everyone was super excited for A.J. Brown and he goes to the Tennessee Titans and it was oh mm -hmm. nope A.J. Brown I don't want him he's off my draft board I was guilty of this that I moved him way down my rankings because I wanted immediate production and I let my talent evalu evaluation of A.J. Brown get diminished by him landing with the Tennessee Titans. Well, Marcus Mariota loses his job to Ryan Tannehill, and it turns out A.J. Brown is who we thought he was, and that is an elite talent at the wide receiver position, and he jumped immediately up to becoming a top 10 dynasty wide receiver because he's great. So this would be a bet on talent. Cortland Sutton from the Denver Broncos, he just signed a four-year $60 million extension He's going to turn 27, so he is still in the the peak years of being a, a relevant fantasy football wide receiver. Drew Locke has ruined all production for for the Denver Broncos wide receivers. Since 2019, Cortland Sutton averages 46 yards a game with Locke. Games without him, 65 yards a game. And that includes like a pretty rough season here with Teddy mm -hmm. Bridgewater. Yeah. And the reason why I am betting on Cortland Sutton is because the Denver Broncos are not only betting on the wide receiver core, but they have doubled down. They gave Tim Patrick, a.k.a. Fireball Jones, a contract extension. They have Jerry Judy on the rookie contract. They just gave Cortland Sutton a huge amount of money. They are going to do something 
at the quarterback position. I don't know if they can improve it because that's this is definitely a, a bet on the talent of Cortland Sutton. They're, I imagine they will go after Russ if he becomes available. They'll go after Watson. They'll go after Rodgers. They'll go after somebody. Mm-hmm. But when you invest this amount of money into your wide receiver trio, because Jerry Judy's on a rookie contract, he's still making a ton of money. You can't sit back and be complacent and have a quarterback that can't get your guys the ball. It's not just Cortland Sutton who has fallen apart for the Denver Broncos. So this isn't like, well, Jerry Judy is still thriving, so Cortland Sutton must have lost something after he had the ACL tear. It's, no, everyone for the Denver Broncos is suffering. They are not putting up any type of production. You're probably going to see a coaching change here coming up pretty soon. So I think that betting on Cortland Sutton, you don't have to pay the talent price right now, and I think that that could change rapidly over this offseason. Yeah, I, I saw your this name in our show doc, and I, I immediately said I, I really like it because I do believe Cortland Sutton is very, very, very talented. The four-year, $60 million contract means for Dynasty that he is a centerpiece of this offense. Now, the offense has been trash. It's been awful. The centerpiece of trash is garbage. So, <laughs> you, you know, this is in not... the center of your trash <laughs> is all the garbage. Um you know, it's not going to cost you a lot to get Cortland Sutton. You could probably get him for a second round pick. I think if you offer a second round pick, you might be able to have a, a fantasy manager turn that around. And I would be willing to give that up because Teddy Bridgewater's done. He only signed a one year contract and he sucks. So he's not coming back. I, if he sucks and Drew Locke was the backup to him, I don't, I think that they've exhausted that experiment. So there will be change. And that's not to say that the change will be better, it could get worse. But there will be change. And the, right. the bet on talent for a, an affordable talent with a four-year, $60 million contract, I like that. It doesn't cost you much. We're not saying go trade the world for Cortland Sutton. We're not saying he's going to be great. We're saying he could be great and he costs you very little. And he did it this year. You had three games at the beginning of the season where at 159 yards against Jacksonville, against uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, 120 in a touchdown, against the Raiders, 94 in a touchdown. He, The talent is still there. He's still a good player. The Denver Broncos absolutely believe in him. Oh, man, there will be more Dynasty talk to come through the offseason. Reminder, we do not go anywhere. Uh, I've been asked about our, our schedule, mm-hmm. and so we will finish the remainder of this week. And then starting next week, shows will release on Tuesday and Thursday. If you are a kind, beautiful supporter of this of this podcast at jointhefoot.com, you do get a third bonus episode. And those bonus episodes are strictly listener questions. And especially during the offseason, man, those shows are those incredibly are fun. Uh, so th- that'll be the schedule. Do we not- also have a green room show tonight yes and do not one, forget about the party room and we have one more green room next week as well uh that'll be our final green room tomorrow we've got starts of the week we've got the conclusion oh of the goodness. boom boom story of the century can the can that really conclude that's one of my questions tbd man i don't have the answers ladies and gentlemen i i do not know where the story is going to go where it will end if it will end if but it I could end. But I do know that's the end of this episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Matchups tomorrow. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>